welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. I thought tonight we would do another Disney World for beginners videos or for anyone who just hasn't been in a while or for anyone who is just curious regarding exactly what Nina packs in her park bag. That's right, this is my park bag right here. I have shown it before. It is by Kipling. It is considered a small backpack, so it is not a campus backpack. It is not a school-sized backpack. It's a little bit smaller. It's kind of the size of a lounge fly, but a little roomier, so slightly larger than your typical lounge fly. I purposely look for a backpack that has a few things. Number one thing is I love a pocket on the side, which is hard to tell because my backpack is black. A pocket on the side, which is great for water bottles or any sort of thing you want to throw in there last minute. I do like a couple different zippers. Of course, I love a lightweight. I love washable. And I love kind of just easy to put on, right? You guys with me? So we're going to go over my top 20 items that I personally put in my park bag. Now, this is my personal park bag. Um, not necessarily the family park bag, but if you wait till the end of the video, I'm going to give you my top, I don't know, 10 or so items to pack for children. Things people often forget when packing for kids. So make sure you guys stay to the end of this video. But yeah, I'm going to show you exactly all of the items I personally pack and use with some kind of tips and tricks regarding how to pack them for easy access, if that makes sense. So yes. All of this stuff 100% fits inside my small size Kipling backpack. And for those of you who remember, this is my older backpack. It's the exact same size. It's just a little bit easier to see. This is by, by Vera Bradley. This is known as their Hadley backpack. Again, it has the pockets on the side for water bottles. Um, they do have another backpack out called the Small Backpack, also by Vera Bradley. All right, and before we get started, I do wanna mention that all of these items are up on my Amazon Influencer account. So make sure you guys uh, check that out if you're interested in any of these items. But let's get started. So in no real particular order, right? We're gonna start with a few obvious and get kind of deeper. So the first thing, of course, is a wallet, right? Of course you need a wallet. This is my wallet right here. It is a Disney Parks wallet. It is RFID protected, which I love, which means I can easily take it from park to airport and whatnot. Obviously you want to take, you know, your ID, any credit card in case you're purchasing anything, and cash. I always keep cash with me in my wallet because you never know when a situation might happen and you need cash. Not to mention you need cash for tipping. Anyone who touches your stuff, essentially, anyone who touches your suitcases, any sort of porter or bus driver, people like that, bellhop services, you do need to tip them as well as mousekeeping and housekeeping and stuff like that. In fact, something I have found helpful to do, I have shown this before, I actually take an envelope and I write out all the people I might potentially meet throughout my stay, and I actually list out how much I might tip them so I can kind of itemize how much money I'm putting in here. Like if I'm gonna give the bus driver five to eight dollars, I make sure I have five to eight dollars in my envelope and I keep going down the line so that I make sure I have all of my cash for all of my tipping purposes and it's different cash that I would use for say purchasing something. So I kind of keep it separated just for tipping purposes. So that's my tip there with um, cash for tipping. Moving on. Nina doesn't go anywhere without chapstick. I get so chapped and dry, especially in the high Florida heat, that I always have to have my chapstick. Now, I used, of course, I used to put it in my pocket, but then when you're digging in your pocket for something else, the chapstick always got lost. And the last thing I want to do is dig in the bottom of my bag for my little tiny chapstick. So this is what I do. I actually bought one of these chapstick holders. You can get these pretty much anywhere, Etsy. I think they even have some on Amazon. I put a carabiner on it and I actually carabiner it to the outside of my park bag. That way I always have easy access to my chapstick because I am constantly applying chapstick. So don't forget about that. Of course, obvious, right? Sunglasses. 
again with the tips, these are my sunglasses in a Disney Park sunglass holder. I actually got this at Disney World. These are my sunglasses right here. I am a Ray-Bans girl. Look at how cute these are. You guys see them? Anyway, so my tip is because you're constantly going in and out of rides, in and out of outdoors, indoors, I find it really helpful to have a sunglass holder that has a little carabiner on it, right? That I also attach to the outside of my backpack. Uh, again, this is from Disney Parks. I actually got this at the theme park. Specifically, I got it just outside of the Pirates of Caribbean ride if you're looking for that. So yeah, sunglasses in an easy access area is my tip for that. Next thing is medicine, right? I feel like a lot of people kind of forget this, but any sort of medicine that you might need while you're at the theme park is really important. So think, you know, Advil headaches, think allergy. What if you end up with some, you know, you get over pollinated and you have an allergy attack over your allergy pills, water pills. So a lot of people have problems with edema or, you know, the heat and the sweating and they kind of swell up. So if you have medical grade water pills, don't forget to pack those. I find I swell throughout the day 100%. My legs and whatnot will get swelly. Swelly, is that a word? So make sure you pack those as well. Heartburn, people who get heartburn, don't forget your Tums and your things like that. Fever, I know we're in the middle of COVID situation, but just in case you go to the park and you're feeling great and then all of a sudden a fever spikes, you don't wanna not have that medicine. And of course, um, I have to carry an Epi. But here's my kind of tip with the medicine, right? I don't need a whole bottle of allergy pills and I don't need a whole bottle of Advil and so on. So I actually pack this teeny tiny smidget, which is by Tupperware, so you can see all of my pills inside so I just keep this little guy in my park bag so it cuts down on space and it only has what I need in it, like 10 Advils, five allergy pills and whatnot. Um, and it usually lasts for my entire trip. So that's my tip on medicine. Along with the EpiPen, I do carry with me a chef's card right here. I have myself on the front, my kiddos on the back. This has um, all of our allergies listed on it, all of our criteria and things the chefs need to know about when feeding us. I always have one with me in my park bag because we never know when we're gonna hit some sort of restaurant or situation. And it actually is great for the chefs to see, okay, well, wow, that's okay. If you have one or two allergies, it might not be necessary, but we have a whole list and it's really helpful for them to see the allergy listed out with the person's face. So when they're cooking individual things for that person, it helps identify um, the kid or the person to the allergy. So yeah, don't forget about your allergy chef card. And okay, sunscreen. Obviously you need to pack sunscreen. What we do is of course we sunscreen in the morning, lather up, right? But I like to pack a travel size sunscreen for throughout the day. Me specifically, I use Sunbum. This is my Sunbum face travel stick. I like it specifically because I just use it on the key point areas here on my face because that's where I tend to burn the most. If you have little kitties, you might wanna get a travel size regular uh, sunscreen so you can kind of respray or re-put on for the entire body. But for me, that's what I personally use. And I do, I will spend more money to buy a travel size version of my products because it fits better in the park bag. So rather than carrying a giant sunscreen and a giant this, I will spend more, more, more money, get the travel size version so they fit in my smaller backpack. Again, the key is always to pack less, not pack more, but obviously when you need something, you need something, right? Next thing on my list, oh, mouse ears. You can't go to Disney World without mouse ears. That's right. And for those of you who comment on my mouse ears all the time, thank you, I appreciate it. I have a huge mouse ears collection in the several hundred range. <laughs> It's kind of an addiction for me. Um, they're all over the house. But anyway, um, I love having mouse ears when going to Disney World. But of course, if you're a guy and you're not interested in mouse ears, don't forget about those hats and visors. So even though mouse ears don't really protect my face, they just look kind of cute, you do want to consider something like a baseball hat or a visor. 
or a sun hat when in the theme parks because it can be hot. Next thing, of course, is Band-Aids. That's right. I have just a kind of small little Ziploc baggie that I keep Band-Aids in. Now, I keep two types of Band-Aids in my park bag at all times. Regular, actual, like, oops, boo-boo Band-Aids, right, in case you get a little scratch or something or a kid falls and skins their knee. But then I also pack in here blister Band-Aids. That's right. You are sweating in the heat with shoes that may decide to kind of rub you in a certain spot on your foot or your toe that can develop kind of a water blister, which can be so painful and actually affect you the following day. So I love packing my uh, blister band-aids. I actually use a band-aid brand. Uh, of course, you can get blister aids from any sort of brand. And I purposely pack those because you just never know when a problem is gonna arise on your foot. So yes, and because I just take them out of the pack and I stick them in a, I mean, this is so small, it doesn't take up any space in my backpack at all. I have a whole box that I keep in my suitcase and I just replenish as I go throughout the day as needed. But that way I'm not carrying around the whole box, right? So it's like I'm bringing all the stuff I need to bring, but I'm kind of condensing into smaller amounts. Hopefully this makes sense. All right, another thing on my list is pins. Official Disney pins for pin trading. My kids absolutely love to do pin trading. It's fun for the adults as well. So I keep a little baggie filled with pins. It has to be, like I said, the official Disney pin with the Mickey Mouse back on it. But I throw a few in my park bag so that just in case I decide to do some pin trading, I can absolutely go ahead and do so. So the next thing up is gum. Now, Disney, 100% no gum on property, meaning they do not sell gum. Nowhere can you go to find gum. This was something Walt wanted back in the day. He didn't want gum stuck all over his rides and the trash cans and the table. I mean, it's just gross, right? So you cannot find gum on property. If you are a gum chewer, you gotta bring your own. So make sure you bring your own gum. In fact, I stick gum in the same pill smidget case. I go ahead and just stick my gum in there, right in there with my Advil. Uh, but just in case you are worried about a little bit of a stinky breath, you know, maybe you had onions on that burger, go ahead and pack yourself some Tic Tacs or some peppermints in your park bag. These are also great if for some reason you got on a ride and you just feel a little motion icky kind of off the ride, go ahead and pop in that gum or that Tic Tac because peppermint actually can help soothe the tummy in case you did get just a little bit of motion sickness issues. So yeah, always gum and always with the Tic Tacs. Next thing up, kind of a little obvious here, but I don't go anywhere without a water bottle. This is my new water bottle. I actually just picked it up. It is by Stanley. Um, I got it at Starbucks actually. But what I love about this is it's kind of thin and narrow so it doesn't take up a ton of space in my park bag. So as long as I can easily find a way to refill it with more water, I absolutely love kind of this tiny size. It is a 12 ounce. It is leak proof. I tested it. I totally filled it with water and was trying to shake it out. So yeah, but you definitely don't want to forget a water bottle for everyone. Everyone in your party should have their own water bottle, whether it's like a refillable water bottle like I just showed you, or even a disposable water bottle that you can kind of fill up throughout the day and then recycle. Either way, water, right? Next thing again, kind of obvious, snack. I always have a snack with me. I absolutely love these by Cliff Bar. Uh, but my key here for snacks is you kind of want protein to kind of jumpstart you a little bit if perhaps maybe you had too many Dole Whips, too much um, cotton candy or something a little too sugary and you need that kind of protein to counterbalance yourself. I know me with being uh, anemic, I have to balance that out. I can easily crash if I have too much sugar. But my uh, tip here for snacks is you don't want chocolate-based snacks because chocolate melts even when in a granola bar i can't tell you how many times we accidentally packed a chocolate granola bar the kids are unwrapping it and they've got chocolate all over their fingers all over i mean it's just it just try to get non-chocolate but you can pack anything from trail mix to 
uh, fruit if you want to, but just be careful. Fruit does smash and get bruised easily, which is why I do prefer just kind of a simple granola bar. But yes, anything that kind of helps you out, make sure you pack those snacks. Next thing up is really anything to help you with the heat. Now I do have a whole video on, you know, ways to beat the heat at the theme parks, but specifically this is what I have currently in my park bag, is um, you can wear a neck fan around your neck, or this is my handheld fan, which is also in my neck fan fan video. In fact, I show you a tons of different fans and I kinda test them all out to find my personal favorite. This is one of the ones that won. I love this uh, handheld fan, it is so powerful. You can actually hold it, right? You can bend it and put it on a table. So if we're outside eating, having a snack, I can just put this on the table and have it just kind of blow at me to give me a little bit of relief. I absolutely love this handheld fan. So yes, don't forget a neck fan or a handheld fan, or you can get a cooling towel, which I don't have one in front of me, but I definitely uh, use cooling towels. Uh, Frog Togs is a brand that I use the most. Also, Mission makes uh, cooling towels. The other thing I will do, which I know sounds kind of gross, but I bring a washcloth with me. A nice, soft, microfiber, absorbs mo moisture washcloth. Why? Because in the high heat of Disney, you can easily just walk outside and just start dripping. Dripping like crazy. I pack one of these to kind of blot get under here and blot. I take it to the bathroom, fill it with water, wring it out, keep it in my bag, wear it around my neck, whatever. So I, and these are so light and squishy, like they're really easy to pack. So yeah, I bring what I call a sweat towel <laughs> with me. But rather than trying to find a paper towel or something to blot with, I just bring that. Next thing is, hand sanitizer. So even before COVID, I of course packed hand sanitizer, but now with COVID and things going on, you just can't underestimate the power of hand sanitizer. And yes, Disney does have hand sanitizer things throughout the park, but I find they're more empty than not. So I'd rather just put the power in my own hands and pack my own hand sanitizer. So again, because of COVID, I'm using more hand sanitizer than I did before, so I actually have another handy little hang on my backpack hand sanitizer pouch. Again, Etsy or Amazon, it should be up on my account. I prefer spray hand sanitizer, but whatever kind you like. So I purposely carabiner this on to my backpack, so again, I have easy access. So yes, the three things I will have dangling from my backpack are chapstick, hand sanitizer, and my sunglasses. Other things you can take, of course, is you can pack these individual little like wet ones, which are great. If you are bringing a family with you or if you have food allergies, this is my favorite product. In fact, my husband will carry this in his park bag so that anytime we go to eat, he will wipe down the tables and the chairs with this. And then of course, if we get grimy hands or we need to sanitize, we can use the same product. But this is by Wet Ones. It is the only hand sanitizer that I know of on the market that will remove food proteins, which is key here. But I love this size and this little cup because you can actually stick it on the outside of your backpack. You know, in the, in the water bottle holder area, you can actually stick your hand sanitizer. So either way, however you wanna pack and bring hand sanitizer, it is 100% on the list. Next thing up is, oh, well, cell phone. Don't forget your cell phone. Of course, that is obvious, but the key here is you don't wanna forget your cell phone cord. A lot of people I noticed buying the cords in the gift shop because they remembered their phone, but now they need a way to charge it. So they forgot the cord and the charging capabilities. So that's what's key here is don't forget that cord so that you can charge your phone, whether with a backup battery or they do have outlets throughout the parks and even on the buses, you can often find an outlet. So yes, don't forget your cord and often the USB connector as well. And along with cell phone, a camera. For those of you who are not 
using your cell phone, you might want to bring a camera. Obviously, I bring several cameras with me, but yeah, so you can easily bring your phone, use that as a camera or your own camera. And of course, going along with all of that stuff, I did kind of mention it, is a battery pack, a battery bank, a whatever you want to call it, portable charging system. Uh, this is the one I use. It is on uh, my account. It is a five day pack, meaning it will last for five days. Do you need it to last for five days? No, but that just means I can charge my phone several times. I can charge my camera several times. I can charge my kids stuff several times all within one park day. And then at the end of the day, I just charge this bad boy back up again and use it again for the next day. Key, you want to look for a good power bank that has a long lasting power, meaning my five dayer is perfect for me. And you want thin and kind of small, obviously, because mine's a five dayer, it's a little bit bigger, but they make some the size of lipstick cases. So just don't forget that backup battery pack. So I have a few things kind of grouped together and I'm just gonna call them kind of personal items, little, little things that you yourself may need. First one on my list, of course, is a scrunchie. You'll find lots of ladies out there with these cute little scrunchies. I find that a lot of people will enter the park with their hair down, right? They're looking good. They want their picture in front of the castle. And then throughout the day, it gets hot and sticky. And so they will take their scrunchie and put their hair up. So yes, I always have a scrunchie or a hair rubber band with me at all times. I will also have a nail filer. My kids love to make fun of me, but I don't know what it is about traveling. I will break at least three to five nails while on vacation. And I'm constantly like, ooh, broke another nail, and then I gotta, you know, file it out so I don't like scratch and stuff. So yes, I always have a nice small little nail filer. It doesn't take up any space, so why not? The other thing is um, toothpicks, or I will pack my dental flossers. This was just a travel size that I just keep refilling because again, Broccoli and other weird things you might be eating could get stuck in your teeth. You don't wanna be that person with that gorgeous photo with the big you know, sesame seed in your teeth. So yeah, I always pack my flosser. Other thing is deodorant. I always tell this story, but there was a time several years ago, we were getting ready in the morning in the hotel and the husband and I had a little tiff. Yes, that happens even to me. So the husband and I are having a little bit of a disagreement in the middle of me getting ready. Totally forgot to put on deodorant. Yep, it happens. We're headed to Epcot and I just started feeling like, did I forget deodorant today? Like it was just odd. I went to several different gift shops looking for deodorant, couldn't find any. Finally went to the baby care center, they had deodorant and I was able to apply, but now I just keep a travel size deodorant in my bag. So just in case I forget, or just in case you need to reapply, don't forget deodorant and also tissues. Anytime you may need to blow your nose, maybe it's because I have allergies or back when we were wearing masks more consistently, I was definitely blowing my nose more often. So don't forget about those tissues and also a very popular product is a thigh glide, a body rub or a thigh rub. I do have these up on my account, but they're a special type. It's almost like a deodorant. It's a stick that you will apply in certain areas that tend to rub or get chafe or, you know, kind of burn a little bit when you're walking in the, you know, in the heat and you're sweating and stuff like that. So they have these products that you can apply in various areas to kind of prevent all that rubbing and of course i mentioned it i'm just gonna have to say it guys masks some people are still masking and you never know at what time masks will come back for any given random reason so i do 100 percent suggest that you just throw one in your bag sorry it's hard to see mine is black just pack it in your bag, it takes up no space. So just in case you get into a situation where you need to mask up, you have one. And I always have a mask lanyard with me as well, especially great for the kiddos. So that way if you're masking and then you take it off, the mask is still hanging on you. It's not in your pocket getting lost somewhere. So I 100% will pack at least one mask 
and a lanyard if you're not masking all the time. If you're a masker masking all the time, you might need a few more masks, but for me, a backup just in case is important. Next thing up, ooh, zip lock baggies. I always have Ziploc baggies on me. Here they are right here. I fold them up nice and small so they don't take up any space in my park bag. I use these for several reasons. Obviously, if you're trying to protect something, like say your phone, you went on a water ride, you can pop your phone in your battery bank in one of these uh, Ziploc baggies. Also great for leftovers. If for some reason you went to a restaurant and you forgot to eat all of your whatever, you can pop them in a Ziploc baggie. Also, if you get something like popcorn or a Mickey pretzel for the whole family to share, I like to give my kids their portion of popcorn or a Mickey pretzel in their Ziploc baggie, and then that way they're eating out of a baggie as opposed to, you know, all sticking all of our, all of our hands in one giant popcorn bucket. So many uses for the Ziploc baggie that I always just have them with me anywhere between the snack size, the sandwich size, and even the gallon bag in my park bag at all times. Next thing up, of course, is the poncho. That's right, Florida, Disneyland, wherever you're going, pack a poncho. You never know when you're gonna hit a random rainstorm. And rather than running away, just go ahead and protect yourself and bring that poncho. Of course, you can also bring a travel size umbrella, which I also usually bring. If it's gonna be a heavy storm that day, I will bring both a poncho and a travel size umbrella. And of course, you can also bring a raincoat. Now, here is my crazy little tip. My husband refuses to wear a poncho. I don't know, perhaps he's just too cool for them. Not really sure, he drives me crazy. So he brings a rain jacket, which is like the last thing I would wanna wear and the high heat is a full on rain jacket, but this is him. Anyway, we have noticed the past few trips that when he wears his rain jacket, the backpack gets soaked. So I'm glad he's protecting himself and his head, but he is 100% not protecting that backpack. So did you know that you can actually get a poncho for your backpack? That's right. So I have ordered him a backpack poncho so that when he again just wants to wear his raincoat, he's not getting the backpack, which is usually the family backpack with all of our stuff in it soaking wet. So if you are like my husband and you are anti-poncho, don't forget to protect at least your backpack. Again, those are up on Amazon. Next thing up is, if I can find it here, magic band. That's right, don't wanna go anywhere without your magic band. Now, I know some people who stay off property, magic bands aren't as useful for you, right? They're literally just how you get into the park and you do Genie Plus. I still love magic bands. I will suggest that everyone everywhere gets a magic band because it's just more convenient. Rather than getting out your phone or stumbling to find your park ticket, it's just so much easier to just scan while it's on your wrist because you will have to scan when you enter the park. You have to scan every single time you use a Genie Plus. In fact, Genie Pluses usually make you scan at least twice per ride. And obviously if you're staying on property, this is how you open your resort door, this is how you pay for stuff. So every time we're buying Mickey pretzels, every time we're buying French fries, every time we're buying lunch, I mean, it's just a constant always scanning. So yes, I am 100% pro Magic Band and do suggest everyone gets one. But if for some reason you do not want one, then yes, please make sure you get that park ticket or the key to the world ticket so you have something to scan. So yes, 100%. Magic band or park ticket does need to go in your backpack. Next up is, now I didn't used to be pro this, but a smartwatch. This is my smartwatch right here. I do have the Samsung Galaxy 4 or something, I forget the name. Um, I especially love these now. With Genie Plus and everything that's going on, I love being able to easily look to see what time it is because I know that Genie Plus, I can get my next pass if I haven't, if I'm not doing ride pass, ride pass, I know I wait two hours and I can get my next pass. So rather than constantly looking at my cell phone, I can easily tell the time on my watch. Also, many people love to know how many steps or how much walking they did in the park, so it's good for that. 
but I find it's just nice to not constantly be on my phone. So even though Genie Plus does make you be on your phone, I find it's nice that I can check my email and my messages and all those kind of things on my watch versus constantly being on my phone. So I feel like the two together kind of make me feel like I'm less staring at my phone than I could be. So not sure if a smartwatch is for you. I wasn't really interested in them before, but now that I have one, yes, absolutely love going to the theme parks with my smartwatch. Now we're gonna move on. If you have kids, here are kind of my top things to think about when packing for those kiddos. Again, you probably are gonna need a larger backpack, maybe more of the campus backpack or the school size backpack, but here's the things to know. So we're gonna start with the obvious, right? If you have a baby baby, diapers, lots and lots of diapers, or extra undies if you are in the potty training stage or you just finished potty training, you wanna pack up those backup undies. Also wipes, baby wipes, obviously for any sort of accident or just clean up of the face and the messy eating, either way wipes. Obviously if you have a baby baby, formula, bottles, baby food, all things you need to pack. But here's my thing I wanna give it a suggestion out for is extra pacifiers. That's right, I find pacifiers on, at Disney on the ground a lot, a lot, a lot. You, you, you're pushing your kid in their stroller. They've got their pacifier in. You can't see them because they're in the stroller facing the other direction and they probably have a sunshade up. You don't know what's going on in that stroller. They're playing with their pacifier and bloop, they dropped it, they chucked it. All of a sudden, 10 minutes later, baby, kid, toddler, whoever is screaming because they don't know where their pacifier is. Well, you as mom or dad can't find it, why? Well, they chucked it 10 minutes ago, but you didn't see it. So, yes, extra pacifiers, or you can get one of those kind of lanyards that goes on the pacifier, clips to their shirt, so hopefully they can't do the easy chuck. But yes, I see, oftentimes I will see pacifiers on the ground, or one little shoe. That's right, they love to just unvelcro their shoes and chuck those out the stroller as well. So just kind of know that in advance. But yeah, extra pacifiers is, is important. Also water and snacks. Obviously you gotta give those kitties their water and their snacks. But my tip of course is to limit the sugar. It's hot, it's sweaty, it's, it's overwhelming to be at Disney. You don't wanna over sugar the kiddos, especially the little ones who probably aren't really used to having that much sugar. Um, hat and sunglasses, yes, protect those little kids' eyes and their heads, this stuff is kinda obvious. Uh, but yes, make sure you, you think of these things for the little guys as well. Kids with little tiny sunglasses, sorry, just super cute, super duper cute. My son had these baby fake Ray-Bans that he would wear, it was adorable. Next thing up is a stroller fan. So yes, in that stroller, again, you can't see them because you're pushing them. So you wanna make sure they stay cool, right? So this is my stroller fan, absolutely love it. I don't use it for a stroller anymore. I actually use it in the bathroom to put on my makeup or I'll take it with me to the water park or the pool. But yeah, absolutely love my um, stroller fan. You can actually use them on scooters or wheelchairs as well. So yes, don't forget about the stroller fan. Also, noise canceling headphones. I feel like a lot of parents don't realize how sensitive little kids ears are and those fireworks can be loud. So yes, we have invested in really good noise canceling headphones years ago. These are actually designed for a shooting range. So yes, if these will protect your kids' ears at a shooting range, they will 100% help against fireworks and any sort of loud noises. In fact, it's very common to actually see little kids like doing this during the fireworks show. So just maybe prepare in advance if you have a sensitive kiddo. These are also great if you have a kid with special needs because oftentimes those kids, especially like Down syndrome or autism, uh, they're really sensitive to sounds and it can really stress them out. So don't forget those noise canceling headphones. Also, you need some form of what I call a distraction toy or entertainment, especially for long lines. And if you're gonna use a tablet or a phone, again, don't forget the charging cords or the backup 
batteries. But yes, any sort of way to distract those kids from being in a long line is key. This is a Rubik's Cube. My kids love doing these when they're in line just to kind of entertain them. You can do all sorts of like highlights, puzzle books, or like I said, tablets, phones. You can play a game. Anything you can do for those kiddos to kind of distract them when you're in a line is key also some form of ID card or cell phone label. And what I mean is, is something on the kid that identifies who they are if they get lost. So they make little tattoos actually that you can stick on their arm that you can write, you know, your cell phone number on. Or I would always just put my business card in my kids, you know, pockets, or you can put something on their shoe, like around the laces and write your phone number on it. Tons of things on the internet. You can make a bracelet out of beads and do you know your cell phone number and get the numbered uh, beads and make a bracelet for them. Anything you can think of to identify who your kid is and what, you know, if the cast member finds your child, yay, but then they need to find you. So some way that they can uh, joint the parent and the child together is key. So yeah, research all those kind of great ways that you can uh, Put your phone and your information on your child when at a large venue like a theme park. Also, I know this seems kind of weird, but I always pack a thermometer. Kids are weird. They cannot tell you when they're sick or often they're not feeling good, but they didn't tell you. And then all of a sudden you're at the theme park and they don't feel good and you just wanna make sure they don't have a fever and that you don't need to kick off and run away. So yes, I always pack a thermometer when uh, the kiddos are with me and also their pain meds or their fever meds because just in case your kid does decide to spike a fever and you're actually in the theme park because you didn't know they didn't feel good, which happens guys, go ahead and pop them a few uh, children's Tylenol, children's ibuprofen, and then go ahead and head out and get yourself some shade and some water. But just in case, yes, I always pack my thermometer. And the last thing on the list for little kiddos is because hugging and character signing is back, don't forget the autograph book and that Sharpie. You will be surprised how many kids will see the other kids with these things and want them as well. So just plan ahead, get them for your kiddo, pack them in the park bag, and you'll be good to go. All right, guys, so that's it. That was my top 20 items or things I personally pack in my park bag along with kind of some tips and tricks along the way as well as some things to consider for the kiddos. Now don't forget, all of these items are up on my Amazon account. So if you're interested in any of these items, go ahead and check that out. I also wanna note that if you guys see me in the theme park, please come say hello. I would absolutely love to meet you guys. In fact, I even have stickers for you guys. So if you see me in the theme park, come stop by, say hi, and ask me for a Mermaid Nina sticker i had these made up for you guys a little bit ago so yeah anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it useful i know it was long sorry about that i just have a lot of items to share to help you guys when packing up for the theme park and i get that most of this was disney world exclusive but you could pack the same items at universal disneyland and any sort of outdoor theme park situation so yeah as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications, like this video, and let me know, what did I miss? I'm sure I missed something. Is there something you put in your park bag that I didn't or I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments because either I forgot it or yeah, I want to carry that too. So yeah, guys, let me know in the comments. But as always, mahalo for watching. Nina, out. Bye, guys.